Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the rules that uh, are involved in differentiation. There are a number of them, and we're going to look at uh, four of them in this video, and subsequently, we'll consider others. Now, the first we have here is called the constant rule. So this rule says that if you have a constant C, that the derivative of any constant is actually equal to zero. So if you have a constant C and you take the derivative, you are going to get zero. And so the implication is a derivative of, uh, say, a constant like five, that's a real number. Any real number, whether positive or negative, whether fraction or whole number, the derivative will give you zero. And then uh, the second rule say is called the power rule. It says that if you have uh, a function f of x equal to x raised to power n, then the derivative of that function is equal to this, which is bring your power down to become a multiplier and subtract 1 from it. So an example is, let's take it that my y is equal to x raised to power 5. Okay, so if I want to take the derivative of this, I am going to have 5 will come down, multiply the same x raised to power 5, then minus 1. And that is going to give us 5x raised to power 4 as a derivative. Another example, y equal to, say, the cube root of x. Okay, so what will be my dy dx, which is the derivative? dy dx will simply be, whenever you have a root, first of all, change that root by indices to be a power in index form. Sorry, to be a number in index form. And that's going to give you x raised to power 1 over 3. That's the same thing as root 3. Sorry, cube root of x. And when you now take the derivative of this, sorry, this is our x raised to power 1 over 3. And so when you take the derivative of this, you are going to have 1 over 3 will come down. And then you have minus 1 at the, as the power. And that's going to give you 1 over 3 uh, x raised to power 1 over 3 minus 1 will be minus 2 all over 3, okay? And you can stop here, or you can make it to be positive by bringing down the power, the expression in this way. You have 1 over 3, and this is the same thing as 1 all over x raised to the power 2 over 3, which is going to give you 1 all over 3 x raised to the power 2 over 3, okay? And that's the solution. Another example, Let's take it that we have f of x to be equal to 1 all over x squared. Then f prime of x is going to be equal to, now when you have in this form, first of all, change it to be in index form like I said here. So what do we do here? This is the same thing as uh, x raised to power minus 2. And so when you now take the derivative, you will have, and that's equal to minus 2x raised to power minus 3. And that's your solution. All right, so that's what the second rule is all about. The third rule says that if you have a constant multiple of a function, that means a constant multiplying a function. For instance, if my y is equal to 5x raised to power 3, if I want to take the derivative of that function, 5x cubed, So what this is saying is that I can actually decide to bring this 5 out this way and then just take the derivative of s cubed, you know, with respect to x. And that's going to give me 5. If you take the derivative of this, this is going to give you 3. will come down. Then x raised to the power 3 minus 2, sorry, minus 1 is 2. And when you now multiply this, you will now have 15 x raised to the power 2 as a solution. Another example it could be this. Let's assume our f of x is equal to 3 over 4x squared. Okay, so if we want to take the derivative of this, so this means that f prime of x here is going to be, uh, you have your 3 over 4, is going to be on its own times. Then bring down these two, then uh, times x raised to the power 2 minus 1, which is 1. 
and that is going to give us uh, uh, of course these two here will cancel for here so you have only two left and that's going to give you three all over two then x raised to the power one which is just x that's all about the constant multiple rule and finally the rule we are going to look at before we take some examples uh, general examples here you know is called the sum and difference rule this one says that if you have two functions you know combined by a sum or a difference that your derivative can act on the two of them uh, individually and then whatever you have you still join it by your addition or subtraction that's all in this case for instance if i have my y to be equal to x squared plus 5 for example so if i want to take the derivative of this sorry okay so the derivative of this says that uh, you are going to differentiate this and differentiate this and whatever you have becomes your answer that's the meaning of this so your f of x here is now your x squared and the g of x is your 5 so you differentiate them and then see add up so this is going to give us 2x then plus this one if you differentiate it you have 0 and so your final answer is just what 2x okay and if it is subtraction you will subtract and whatever you have becomes your answer so no matter the length of a function all you need to do is to differentiate the different terms individually and then uh, you bring down whatever you have simplify it together with the signs that you have there all right so let's quickly look at some examples it says we should take the derivative of the following functions and the first one here says that uh, f of x is equal to this and we're asked to differentiate it so it, it, to differentiate it means we are looking for f prime of x and that is going to be equal to so like what we said under the sum and uh, the difference rule so you're going to differentiate each of these terms individually and that's going to give us if you apply the power rule here you are going to have 3x raised to power 3 minus 1 which is 2 then minus 4 if you differentiate of course you know the power here is 1 so the 1 will come down and multiply 4 to give you 4 and then you are going to have now x raised to the power 1 minus 1 is going to be 0 and then plus uh, if you differentiate a constant you have zero and so your answer here is simply equal to x squared 3x squared minus 4 because x raised to power 0 is 1 and then plus 0 this is simply your answer so in other words from here we will note that if you have your y to be equal to only x the differentiation of x alone is actually equal to 1 and that's exactly what we got here so if it is 4x, just take away the x, call it 1 and multiply. And so you will have just the coefficient left. Okay, example 2, we are asked to differentiate this one. So uh, that means if we call this y now, we are looking for dy dx. We can also call it g prime if we want. Okay, so if we differentiate this, we are going to have minus, the 4 will come down x is to power 4 minus 1 is 3 all over 2 remember the 2 will still be there then plus uh, here you have 3 already the 2 will come down and when the 2 multiplies 3 you have 6 then x is to power 2 minus 1 is 1 then minus remember i said if you differentiate uh, expression that has just x the x will turn to 1 and so you have only 2 here and so this is going to give us of course you have to reduce this this is going to give us 2 here which is minus 2 x raised to the power 3 then plus 6 x then minus 2 and that is the solution here okay and finally for example 3 we are given that uh, y is equal to this so we want to have our dy dx Okay, so to get the dy with respect to x, remember, we are writing dx because the function is in x. Assuming the function is in t, then our, our derivative will be dy dt. Okay, so now when you have a quotient in this form and you only have 
one term as the denominator, you are expected to first of all reduce it into polynomial, a single polynomial where um, every term here is just on its own. And so if we do that, here we are going to have 3x squared all over x minus x over x plus 1 over x. And so this is going to give us 3x minus 1 plus, if we take this into uh, an exponential form, that's going to be x raised to the power minus 1. All right. And so at that point now, we can now differentiate. Okay, so if we differentiate 3x, we are going to get 3 from what I said here and here. And if we differentiate 1, we will have 0. If we differentiate x raised to the power minus 1, that is going to give us the minus 1 will come down. Then times x raised to the power 1 minus, minus 1 minus 1 will be minus 2. And so your solution will be 3 minus plus minus will be minus and 1 times this will still give us x raised to the power minus 2. And we can actually stop here or we can write this as 3 minus. If you bring change this into fraction, that is going to be 1 all over x squared. And this is also your solution. Another example. Okay, so we have example 4 here. All right, so what do we do here? Now, first of all, we need to change these particular uh, values we have here from radicals to exponential forms. And that's going to give us t raised to the power half minus 6. This one is going to be t raised to the power 1 over 3. Okay, so if we now differentiate this, that's going to give us ds dt, like I said earlier. Our, our dependent variable here is s, not y, and our independent variable is, is t. Okay, so that's going to give us here now, we'll have half raised to power, half minus 1 will give us minus half. And then we have uh, minus 6. Now, the, minus, the 3 will come down. Sorry, 1 over 3 will come down times t raised to power. 1 over 3 minus 1, if you do 1 over 3 minus 1, that's going to give you minus 2 over 3. And so we have minus 2 over 3. And so what do we have here? I can actually change this into positive power, and that's going to give me 1 over 2, 1 all over t raised to power positive half. Then in this case, 3 here will cancel, and so you have 2. So 2t, okay, 2t raised to power, and the t is raised to power a negative, uh, and it has a negative power. So I'm going to take it into reciprocal, which is t, 1 all over t raised to power 2 over 3. At this point, if you multiply out what you have here, this is going to give you 1 all over t raised to power half, then minus 2 times 1 here will be 2 all over t raised to the power 2 over 3. And we can actually stop here. Or we can write it this way. 1 all over 2. t raised to the power half is actually the same thing as the square root of t. Then minus 2 all over t raised to the power uh, 2 over 3 is the same thing as cube root of t squared okay and either of these will also be your solution okay and so that's where we are going to end it for this video kindly subscribe to our youtube channel and we'll see you in our next video like comment and share our youtube videos bye